So the thing is, all of this, I so often felt inappropriate in what I was doing, and that's why I felt like I had to hide. Um, and, you know, I know that's, I think I know that that's a modestly universal queer feeling. Um, I would have to imagine even for people who were born much later than I. I, mean, I was born in 1960. I would think people who were born in 1980 and even 1990, um, growing up, there's always, when you start to realize, well, wait a minute, <laughs> everybody else seems to be veering in this direction and I'm veering another way. Um, and that doesn't feel appropriate and therefore might not feel particularly safe. Um, I think that's a conundrum and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Um, anyway, I don't want, it's like the whole sort of politics or debate of that isn't particularly of value, but the personal effect is interesting. Um, in a larger sense, I think that's one thing that makes it has made queer people slightly askew and so easily adaptable to um, stances of irony in camp and, and things like that. Um, and I guess that's probably pretty well argued in other venues. But for me, the way I understood it was that even though I tended to be cruising guys who were my own age, I felt like a pedophile. It was odd. Um, I hung out at Okie Dogs on um, Santa Monica, my God, forever. And um, it was another big, you know, it was like a hustler hangout and we had pinball machines. Yes, that's how long ago it was. And um, later, this is, and actually I was pretty old for the kind of people who were on the streets doing that. I would have been in my like middle twenties then, maybe a little older. And um, I met this guy, he was really, he was fun. I really liked him. He was um, all the usual things, cute and energetic and um, enigmatic and nice to be with and all that stuff. And um, he, I was just like obsessed somehow. And it was, it was like as close as I came to having any kind of a relationship, except of course, you know, it wasn't. Um, because I thought of him, he was probably in his early 20s, I thought of him as a little kid, and that I was somehow taking advantage of him. Um, because I was older, and I knew more and there was something wrong about me that wasn't wrong about him and therefore I risked tainting whatever it was in him that I appreciated. Um, and I mean none of this is like a thing about self-pity or anything like that. It's more about acknowledging how a person comprehends their own difference. Um, speaking of universal feelings. So anyway, the guy at Okie Dog, um, he was he wanted needles. I had needles. I'm a diabetic, so I could get syringes. They weren't exactly the right kind, but they'd work. And um, I became aware of this whole larger 
organization behind this guy. There was this other mysterious guy who also was certainly younger than I was, but he was really tough. Um, <laughs> um, he wore sweatpants and no underwear and sunglasses and a um, tight white tank top. Ooh, at night, very sexy. And the thing was whatever I brought or whoever I was had to pass his judgment before that would be okay. And there was something about this that was both super alluring to me and then also felt huh, wait a minute, I don't know what it is I recognize here, but um, this all of a sudden feels like I shouldn't be here. Um, like this one guy, Mike, I think his name was, shaved head, wrangly sort of like kid from um, the outback of Texas, he sort of gets who I am, because um, he's weirdly separate and lost too, but this other person with the sunglasses and the black hair and the confident sneer and um, all that sex appeal, um, that sort of honesty doesn't interest him. Um, in fact, my little voice said, <laughs> this person will kill you one way or another. Um, and so, not for the first time, my lucky instinct of um, self-preservation kept me out of something that felt dangerous. Um, Yes, as I often say, life is good <laughs> in so many wild and wonderful ways.